creative welcome back to my channel my name is alana marie i am a documentary filmmaker content creator and content coach in today's video i'm so excited i get this question all the time and it's for my documentary filmmakers or anybody who has an upcoming crowdfunding campaign that they're getting ready to launch and just need some additional assistance with so get your pen and your notebook I'm trying to be as thorough as I possibly can, but of course there's always more information to be shared. Today I'm going to be talking about how I raised over $25,000 on my Documentary Films Kickstarter campaign earlier this year in the middle of a global pandemic. I mean, we are still in the middle of a global pandemic, but to raise money on a crowdfunding platform for a documentary film for a first time filmmaker, <sighs> y'all. It was stressful, but it happens and I am grateful and I'm going to share some of the tips that made my campaign successful. One of the first things I did, and I actually did this early on in my filmmaking process, before I even actually started filming, I researched different crowdfunding platforms. So I researched Kickstarter, I researched GoFundMe, and I researched Indiegogo and I wanted to gauge how they manage their crowdfunding platforms, what would make the most sense for me, what's the success rate on all of these platforms. And of course I ended up going with Kickstarter. So I went even deeper into researching, okay, so what made for a successful Kickstarter campaign and what made for a non-successful Kickstarter campaign? What did their story look like? What did their video look like? What did their incentives look like? and just seeing who all was on their team. Is it something that they already had somebody in the industry affiliated with their film and that made it easier? And so I took notes and tracked all of that data into a notebook. And I did this very early on and I use it as a point of reference as I got to the point where I was getting ready to launch my Kickstarter campaign. So I highly recommend researching all of those crowdfunding campaigns engaging which one makes the most sense to manage your project's crowdfunding campaign. I also vetted and consulted with and hired a campaign manager. I knew this was a feat that I did not want to take on my own. I am 100% creative. Business aspects that have to do with creative cause me great strife. I understand that it's important. I understand it's vital, especially if I want to make money. But I knew I had to expand my reach and adding to the team of somebody who has experience in this industry, knew what they were doing, and I could delegate those tasks to that person while I remained in my creative space. So I consulted with a campaign manager. His name is Andy. He's an awesome. He's a copywriter. Um, lives in St. Louis, just as I did at the time when I launched my campaign. And he had two other successful crowdfunding campaigns under his belt. Um, one for a book, and I believe another one was for a film. But I actually consulted with him a year before I set to launch the campaign. I wanted to know about his process. I wanted to know how he would go about managing my campaign and if it made sense. What, what would our timeline look like? What were his rates? And so when I was ready to at least begin getting ready to launch, we circled back to one another and two months before the campaign launch, we met and we set a schedule and it's so many details in going into what a campaign manager does. But the premise of this tip is to find somebody that can take some of that legwork off of you so you can focus on the campaign in and of itself. All the logistics and, and in case that is your ministry, which it was not mine, but I hired somebody to do that for me. Vitally important if you can, if it integrated into your budget, which I did, I integrated paying him into our crowdfunding budget for how much money we were trying to raise. And it worked out. And so contingent on your budget, the vibes, their history in working with managing crowdfunding campaigns, what their expertise is, and just aligning those expectations to make sure that whoever you choose makes the most sense for your project. Another thing I did, which can be quite tricky sometimes, is I budgeted out the needs for my film and then add on those additional fees that I knew would come out. So I raised funds or post-production funds to finish my film. So I needed assist. I didn't need any more assistance filming. I was already done filming. And so this is to close out my film. This is to provide assistance with sound mixing, sound editing, the aesthetics. I have hiring an animator, um, licensing if I need to get any additional archival clips 
and images, I would have the funding to do that. But also using Kickstarter, should you meet your goal, they take out fees. They take out their own platform usage fees and they take out fees for when people use their credit card to support you. That's an additional fee. If you hire a campaign manager, are you adding those fees into it? If you're having incentives and you're like physical incentives and you need to mail them out, you need to integrate the cost of shipping into that. You need to integrate the cost of how much it takes to produce your incentive into all of that. And so really find, to, again, this is why I got a campaign manager so I didn't have to think about all of this. Well, I had somebody else to think of it with me. But all of that goes into your budget in addition to the film. So really itemizing what is it I'm asking money for. And then I have that, okay, so what are the expenses, additional expenses that it'll take in order for me to meet this goal? Because if you need 25,000 for the film in and of itself, you probably need to buffer another 10 grand to cover the additional fees that's going to come with that. Another thing that I found helpful in helping me raise 25,000 for my Kickstarter campaign was enhancing my personal brand before my Kickstarter campaign, during my Kickstarter campaign and afterwards. So as a content creator, I was still producing content. I still want to produce content. I want to be known as a content creator, both within the documentary film industry and outside. And so this one can be tricky because I know there are a lot of people who really could care less about developing a personal brand or not really with the social media wave and really want people to support them for the work or support the work and could care less if they liked you as a person. I wanted both and it actually worked in my favor because a lot of people who may know nothing about my film subject, film topic, they wanted to support me in my work and they believed in what I was doing. They believed in the work that I was producing as well. And so it worked in my favor. So continuing to produce content outside of my documentary film during this time, continuing to build on my clientele as a content creator and really investing in my personal brand really pushed us over the edge. I, my, my tentacles were able to reach into other industries. I was able to access a vast network, me personally, which really helped boost us in reaching our campaign goal. And the fifth thing that I think really helped boost us to our 25K mark is we had really good incentives. We had feasible incentives that wouldn't cut too much into the budget of what we were trying to raise but also something that people would actually want so my documentary the kinlock doc is a historical based documentary about this all black suburban community in st louis county of missouri and it is where my family is from it is a historical city it was missouri's first all black city and it was one of the largest all black communities in the country during its prime. It has a lot of historical value and gems. And I'm a history head. I love history. I love black history. That is what you're going to get when you come into contact with me. And so one of the things that I wanted to integrate into my incentives were not just cool t-shirts, which we did have. Um, we had two different t-shirts. One of them were for historic black communities within St. Louis, which really, really, really was a hit. Like I was able to sell those shirts outside of the campaign and people are still asking for them now. And then I also had a Save Our Black City shirt for people who were not from St. Louis, but still wanted to feel a part of invested in the interest of preserving our historic black communities. I also found some old vintage pictures from Kenlock that were actually of my family and my grandfather and I got them printed in black and white and so I created an archival print pack for people who were interested in having like archival images around their home and I also wanted to invest in not just tangible things but experiences and so granted we haven't been able to do this yet due to COVID but one of our incentives were to provide a black history bus tour and in collaboration with a nonprofit organization in St. Louis called For the Ville. And the Ville is another historic black community in St. Louis. And for the first time last year, we collaborated on a black history bus tour. Residents from around the area could purchase a ticket to come onto this tour. And we went through several stops of notable historic black historic spaces around the region. And we provided education and lunch throughout the way. And so I wanted to provide that experience as an incentive and it was a really good hit i'm praying that you know as we keep our ears to the streets about what COVID is going to look like over the next couple of weeks over the next couple of months i can actually do that i'm actually looking forward 
to this bus tour. And of course the typical, um, the actual screening, which I haven't been able to do either, um, but people could purchase for them and a friend to attend the screening. They could purchase an opportunity to have a private screening at their home. I did two of those. And then of course, if you were in a different tier, you get credit or producer credit for the film. But really thinking about what makes the most sense for your project and where will people find the most value, not just supporting your project, but what can they get in return? Because it is a give and take type of situation. You don't wanna just throw anything in there. You don't wanna be cheap with your incentives either. So we found things that were feasible. We found things that would provide great experience for our backers. And it took a lot of thought and it took a lot of weighing from other people and just really discerning what makes the sense for the Kim Lock Doc. And so building a team around your project and really spewing ideas of what make the most sense for your project, having really cool incentives. Okay guys, I feel like I just talked a lot. I can feel liquid forming in my mouth. But those are five good tips that I felt really helped give us hedgeway to make over 25,000 in our crowdfunding campaign. My goal was actually 20K and we ended up, we actually got more than 20K. We got more than 25K because we did get donations outside of Kickstarter. Point is we made beyond our goal. And I think these five top tips was really what helped get us to that point. So do you have a crowdfunding campaign coming up, whether it be for your film or any product that you're launching or anything that you are needing to solicit a crowd for in order to support your future endeavor, please let me know in the comments below. We can talk about it. If you have more detailed questions about your specific project, feel free to contact me. I will also leave a link in the description box below. I hope you found these tips helpful to stay tuned about my documentary film because I'm actually in post-production for it now. You can sign up with your email. I will also leave that link in the description box below. But yes, I told you guys this, this would be an awesome episode and I hope you found this helpful. And yeah, I will see you all next Friday. Take care.